This is FYI on your TV brought to you by Hometown News. I'm Kathy Botham. I have got Dominic Yellow back with me. You are the CEO of Lanark Leeds Grenville Addictions and Mental That's Health. Right. You were here about two months ago. It was day two of your That's new right. job as CEO. How's it going? It's going really well. We've uh, I've gotten to lear learn a lot more about the organization itself, uh, being almost two, two and a half months into it. Uh, and we've done a lot of work. We've um, we're almost uh, completed our strategic plan for the uh, for the next three years, um, and it's really focused on the, our people, like our clients, mm -hmm. our community, and then just increasing the quality of our care. Excellent. So those are the four pillars that we're trying to uh, work on. Right, right, yeah. and you brought with you uh, Amanda Fitzgerald. Thank you very yes. much for joining us today. Thank you. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about your brother. Your brother uh, passed away in 2018. Yeah and uh, you have um, organized a golf tournament in his memory. Yep, turning our negative into a positive. That's right, that's right, and you certainly have. You certainly have because uh, y he went through a, a bit of a rough go before he passed away. Can you talk a little bit about your brother? Yeah, so um, we grew up in Kempville. Um, Mike was an athletic kid, played in all the sports, soccer, baseball, hockey. Hockey was his main. Um, he was a goalie. He played AAA and AA hockey um, till he broke his back at 17. He was affiliated with some of the um, like South Granville Rangers and Kanata Stallions and Kempel 73s, but unfortunately his injury um, kind of tossed that aside. And then he went away to university in Waterloo uh, for his computer science, and he stayed up there for three years. And that's when we noticed things were getting hard for him. I just think the whole being six hours away. Um, not having mom and uh, myself so close was a little hard for him. Um, he ended up having to come home and that's when things got really dark and that's when we saw the, the big changes in him and um, he had, he was first diagnosed with um, drug-induced psychosis um, when we brought him to the hospital in April of 2015. Um, we got him on, like, we thought we got him on the right track after we got him some help and all this stuff, but he wouldn't really accept it because, you know, he's a man, there's nothing wrong with men, they're strong, they're all this, but really he, he was hurting. Um, and then our mom passed away in 2016, and that's when things got really bad for him. Um, I guess that main support system was gone. Um, so he just felt alone. I was trying to be there as best as I could and, and, and be the big sister that I've always been to him. But it was hard. I was great raising my own two little kids as well. Um, he started getting into things that weren't Mike, where it was doing a lot of uncharacteristic stuff, um, mixing himself up with the wrong crowd, all this stuff. I think, too, he was just trying to find his way. Right. He just wanted to be accepted as well. Like. Um, there was other things going on and then ultimately 2018 became too too much for him and uh, the beginning of the year just it just snowballed into everything that led up to the event um, and then he had ultimately ended his life uh, November of 2018 and then I decided that we can't sit here and suffer in silence anymore we need to be open we need to show let the world know that men do have emotions that and, and they don't always have to be strong and that, that we can be here for them and help them through these things and just encourage them to speak out. Um, Mike pushed everybody away the last six months. So it was really only me who really knew what was going on and my close friend, because he was always um, in between, like if he wasn't hanging out with me, he was hanging out with her. Mm -hmm. um, he pushed all his friends away because he became this person that he knew that, that they wouldn't, they wouldn't understand, I guess. Not, not wouldn't understand, but like, he didn't want them to see him suffering the right. way he was, right? So he tried, but ultimately the demons got too much. And Mental health is, is such, uh, it's so difficult. <coughs> it is. Because like, you know, did you recognize that there was issues before he did? Yeah. Yeah. I, I knew, I don't know if it's just that sister instinct. Right. Or what, but I was like, come on, buddy. Like, yeah. we got to... Like, let's, let's get your feet on the ground. He lost his job, he lost his car, his cell phone. Like, he was living with my grandparents. Um, sorry, I'll back. When, he was, when my mom passed, he was in Ottawa. But then when she passed, he came back to Kempville to help me with my grandparents. And I think just living with them and, you know, caring for the elderly, but still also trying to find his way in life and his path, 
it just ultimately became too much. And right? I, I really, when you look back at, at some of the history too, those are difficult things for yeah. anybody to go through. And he was 23 when this happened, very right? Young. Very so young. young. Yes, so, so young. young. And those are very difficult things for anybody to go through. But you know, there is help out there and uh, but yeah, I don't know. I, uh, men, is it a little bit more difficult? Uh, well, I think maybe Dominic for people for men to get I, help, or I definitely think it's probably difficult for many people to get mm -hmm. help. But mm -hmm. men in particular, like you were, like we were saying before, is yeah. that they're stoic. stoic they they yeah. want to they want to not show their uh, emotions, um, and uh, they don't want to wear them on their on their on on the outside. Right. And right. get and get help. And uh, but but if you recognize that in your loved one. Right. Like there is help out there. Yes. Um, women too. Women, women are very too. strong. Yeah, yes, women too. Yeah, women are too. And yeah. um, there is help out there. Like there's a crisis line. There's the emergency part. There's our agency. If if it's not something urgent, um, uh, just reach out and get help. There's diff many different ways to get help. There's peer support that may be more attainable to people. There's uh, counseling. There's uh, there's lots of different things that could help people in different ways because everyone thinks going to the hospital. They're going to be admitted. Uh, it may it may be a, a terrible uh, a scenario, but that's not always where we need to go. Right. Um, so it's best to try and reach out and get help. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So you must have to do a lot of homework for him on his behalf. So much, and like going to his doctor and trying to advocate, but because he was over the legal age, mm -hmm. I could only do so much, right? And it had mm -hmm. to be Mike going in, and I'd be like, "Come on, let's go!" And like I'd encourage him to come to counseling and. All this stuff because we did do grief counseling after mom passed and and then he was in other counseling then he finally got his other di his like formal diagnosis when he went away to try and get into the military and he never passed the um the psychiatry evaluation or the psych evaluation that's when he was diagnosed with bipolar manic and then it just like because it was it not that it now was, it's got a name yes now, it's got now a it name. has a name so then it became like real to him and mm -hmm. it was like okay but then he still like he laughed about it and, like not to be just, ah, whatever. And I'm like, no, bud. Mm -hmm. And literally one month before he passed, him and I went on this huge walk around Kempel just talking. Mm -hmm. And like, okay, what are the next steps? How are we going to get you better? Like, dude, you are so young and we can make this better. Like, mm -hmm. we don't have to stop here. Right. Like, sure, okay, you have bipolar manic, but if we know how to address it, if we know how to balance it, if we know how to, if we're educated on it, we can, you, you're going to live a, success, a successful life. You're going to be great. You're going to like... Mm -hmm we'll get past this. It's just a dark day. Mm -hmm. But then it just, I think everything on top of everything, plus he was in a bunch of court battles too. It right. just, it just became too much. Yeah, mm -hmm. too much, too much. But you were obviously a wonderful support for him. Are you the only other sibling? Yeah, it was just him and I. There's just the two of so you. So when we lost our mom, it, it wow. was just him and I, and then I lost him. And then it's like, oh, yeah. it's just me. And you're the <laughs> like, oldest. You're the oldest. I'm the oldest. And he was wow. my baby. Like there's yeah. five years between us. I tell everybody, like when he was little, he was mine. He yeah. wasn't my mom and dad's, he, he was mine. <laughs> yes, yeah. My baby. Yes, yeah. And yeah. I did everything like to protect him and like, I mean, there was, there was time, you know, siblings, five oh, yeah. years. Like when I was 15, he was 10, I was like, oh, he's an annoying brother. <laughs> but at the end of the day, he was my brother. He yes. was my baby. He, he was my firstborn. That's like, right. That's right. I know I had my firstborn, but he's mine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, he Mike was, was mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, and I did everything. Like I love that kid. I still do, obviously. Yeah, absolutely. I was just going to say, you still do. Look still what you're do. doing. Yes. Exactly. Like, I could have just been like, oh, okay, yeah, this happened to us. I'm just going to sweep this under the rug, whatever. We're not going to mm -hmm. talk about it. Instead, I was like, no, we're going to talk about this. We are going to make a difference. If I can do anything in his name and help just one person, yep. I've done something. Absolutely. Right? And Nobody you're... should feel the pain that we feel. Yeah. Like, and you are absolutely doing that. My goodness, just even this awareness, yeah. getting people to know about, about your brother yeah. and that there is help out there. But th the fact that you're organizing a, a golf tournament, last year you were able to raise over $15,000. Yeah. And it was donated to, yeah, it was all to, um, Yeah, Lanark Leeds and Granville, as well as Connect Youth. I did a, a separate t-shirt mm -hmm. sale that I was able to give or $600 to Connect Youth and then fourteen five to Lanark Leeds and Granville Mental Health. Wow. So there again, our recipients this year, and then uh, we'll see yeah. what we can do. Like, excellent. And we're, and we're grateful for the uh, for the donation, and we're all the funds go to back to patient care and to client care. <clears throat> and uh, for example, this year we're using the funds to uh, actually purchase uh, or partly purchase a, a new vehicle that uh, we're able to use to bring clients back and forth to appointments and. And uh, around That's the a around huge barrier sometimes yeah. people can't get to their appointments. So this is yeah. Huge. So it's a yeah. so 
all this money does help and it goes right to patient care. It doesn't pay for our, for salaries, it doesn't pay for equipment for the staff, it pays for uh, uh, things that the clients need. Right, so, right. So let's talk dates and times yeah. and what you need. So this year it's June 17th. Uh, Prescott Golf Club. The reason it's Prescott is because that's where my grandpa and my brother always golfed. Right. So like I like to keep it all, I like the, mem the memories of everything, right? Keeping it all special. Um, we're still looking for donations for our raffle table and our silent auction. Um, sponsors are always welcome. I mean, we are, we have all our ho holes full, but hey, there's still waterways and those sand traps <laughs> to be, to be sponsored. It's all part so, of the experience. <laughs> exactly, right? Uh, we have a lot of fun things planned this year. Um, I brought out a new uh, passport idea, so there's some challenge holes and, and it's just about fun and coming out and raising the awareness. And, Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And I'm, I have a goal of 16,000 this year, so. I want to meet it. There you go. <laughs> Sounds like you're going to do it too. I'm Sounds hoping. Like I'm, I'm hoping. Too. Now your office is in Brockville, but you have a big catchment area too, which includes Kempville. It does. We have an office in Kempville, and uh, yeah, right through from Carleton Place right to Gananoque, we uh, go up the the 416 and down the 401. And, uh, it's a big catchment area. It is a big yeah, catchment yeah, area for yeah, sure, for yeah. sure, for sure. Well, I thank you very much for coming here, sharing your story about your brother. He'd be so proud of you. So proud I'm of you. So. He's watching us right now. I'm, I know. I. I believe that. So, yeah. thank you very much for coming here. Thanks for having uh, me. Again, the date? June 17th. June 17th. Yep. All right. We might have time, have time for you to come back and remind everybody about this again. So. Yeah. <laughs> for sure, for sure. We're Excellent. all full on our teams, but hey, you can still come out and support in other ways like the 50 50, the ball drop, the coming to check out the tables. Excellent. All that fun stuff. Have a meal. You've got all the players? Yeah, it's we have full? 36 teams full. Wow. Yeah. Already. So, 144 golfers. So well, this will be go. our third year of 144 golfers. One year we just had like um, 80 golfers because we were just back after COVID, mm -hmm. so we just kept it small. But another 144 golfers, we're ready to go. Excellent, excellent. Well, sounds like all these people want to support you too. So thank you very much for coming and sharing thank your you. story. Thank you. For I, I've got Amanda Fitzgerald. Thank you very much. Your brother, Michael Lawn, very proud of you right now. Thank you very so. much for sharing <laughs> your story. And Dominic Yello, yep. the CEO, CEO of Landark Leeds. Granville Addictions and Mental Health. Thank Thanks you, for Kathy. joining us Thank again. You, Thanks for having us.